You are about to see one of the finest takedowns on live television you have ever seen. This is an older clip of Douglas Murray debating a radical Muslim politician. The clip may be old, but it is still relevant today. Should Osama bin Laden have been executed or arrested to face trial? Yasmin al Um, uh, He should have been uh, taken. He was unarmed, we know that. If he'd been armed <clears throat> and posing a real danger, I can see the point of doing what happened. Um, and I do understand those people who say at least they didn't throw bombs on, on uh, an entire compound and so on. I think it, it demeans an exemplary democracy and an exemplary president with whom I fell a little in love when he was elected. Uh, he's shown himself to be the ugly American. This is not good. He should have faced a trial. We did it for the Nazis. We say this is what we believe in, the rule of law. They, he's degraded American democracy. And American democracy has been degrading itself, actually, through torture and rendition. So I'm really depressed about it. Douglas Murray? No, I couldn't disagree more. I'm elated by the death of Osama bin Laden. <laughs> As, as I think any decent person should be. Um, the, the issue of whether or not he was armed is, uh, I mean, obviously Yasmin is an expert in these kind of operations, but if you are one of the uh, military... He wasn't if you are one of them, if you, if you, I can continue. If you're done. one of the military personnel uh, in the compound uh, in that situation, you don't know whether he's got a suicide vest. You don't know whether he's going to pull another bomb. And let's get on to the other issues. Firstly, this idea that he could be tried. How can you try Osama bin Laden? Where? When? How do you find a jury that doesn't have opinions about him? How do you find a judge? If anyone's been following the, the attempts to have a trial <coughs> of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in New York, it's proving to be a very, very difficult process. Indeed, very nearly an impossible one, which is why President Obama has now gone to a military tribunal for that. I think, I think, I think this doesn't demean America, it reminds people of who has been right in this conflict, oh, who the victim is, and who the perpetrator is. She Osama bin Laden did not allow any of the 3,000 people in New York and Washington on 9-11 any rights. He took away every single right that any of the people in those powers or their families had. He didn't grant any rights to the families or the victims of the 7-7 subway and bus bombings, which he inspired. It went on and on, and it's a good right. thing that the story has now finished. It hasn't finished, All right. Douglas. All right. Wait a moment, everybody. Wait a, minute. Have, a lot of people want to speak, mm -hmm. and we'll come to them in a moment. I think apart from Douglas, you've all forgotten who were the victims. Those people went to work on 9-11 and 7-7, and they've lost their lives. And for Yasmin to compare the, uh, yeah, uh, Osama bin Laden to the Nazis, you obviously don't know history, and you obviously don't know what it's like to, sub to, to have a victim, to be a victim, to be a child, to lose their parent. I was there. And I, I saw people lose uh, their, their fathers and their mothers. And only Douglas is representing them. Only he is saying what all us feel, all us victims feel. Well, we, uh, we survived 9-11, and I survived 7-7, and I'm proud to say that only Douglas is representing the views of us victims here. I've spent most of my early life fighting terrorism. I've lost friends. I've seen them die in front of me from terrorists. Please don't accuse me of being naive in this. I can just tell you that when you take force, you take it in support of the rule of law, not to overturn the rule of law. Can I just address the issue of whether or not it was an arrest of it? It was military forces that were sent into that compound, and soldiers are trained to fight, and they're trained to shoot and to kill. And if this had been a police operation, then we would have sent police in. America would have sent police in. Pakistan would have sent some police into the building. But it was Osama bin Laden. They knew it wasn't a police operation. It was an army operation. And in an army operation like that, it's very likely that shooting is going to occur, as it did from both sides, apparently, and that somebody's going to get killed. But I just want this absurdity of, of, of all the time of treating people who have broken every single aspect of the rule of law, who then... When they're killed, suddenly all of these people come out and say the rule of law must be applied to Osama bin Laden. We have to remember who the victim is and who the perpetrator is in this. 
Unfortunately, he showed even less respect to all of those at 9-11 and elsewhere around the world. He didn't deserve any respect. Okay. He got what was coming to no, him. I, I, Excuse me. Yes, all right. I, I'm sorry. We have to also remember that hundreds of thousands, nearly a million other people also died. You can't just keep talking about 9-11, okay? <laughs> Lots of people have paid a price for this. And the rules of war say, and Paddy can, I don't know, confirm or didn't deny this, that even uh, when, when people are killed in battle, their bodies are given to families to bury properly. This did not happen. Right. He's no friend of mine, but they should have done that. That's ridiculous. Are you, are you saying that the, 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 the body should have been given back yeah. to the Bin Laden yeah, which family? Which happens after wars. Bodies How are would they find the rest of the Bin Laden family to give it to? Yes, yes, do you do you there really think do you do you really think yeah. that that course of action would have reduced the risk of further we acts would, of terrorism? If we say we that are would more, have been an absurd. If we say uh, we are more civilized, then we have to act. And you, would it's have been, you would have been putting it's thousands difficult. of people's lives at risk. What do you think is going to happen now? People A won't taken. believe he's dead. B and the lady is completely right. This wasn't done according to proper rights. It will just set off another generation. It was a respectful burial at sea. How do you know that? You, you said we don't know anything. How do you know that? <laughs> okay, the man, in, man in the pink shirt. Then I can take another question, then we come back to the big one. Yes. Yeah, I think, um, I think Bin Laden has been let, let off the hook by this, actually. Um, I think if he was actually brought to trial and had to face real advocacy with a, with a rigorous court and, and, a, and a furious crowd outside, I think I know which one I'd rather have. I'd rather have a bullet rather than be uh, subjected to that. Let's hear the water I'd like to hear the view well, of Douglas. I, I wanted to say on this, I mean, President Bush in his memoirs said that he approved of the waterboarding of three known terrorists at Guantanamo in the aftermath of 9-11, one of them being the mastermind of that man I mentioned earlier, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Now, there's no doubt about it. This has damaged America's view in the world. I have no doubt about that. I don't think any of you do. Um, the extent of those so-called enhanced interrogation techniques has been massively exaggerated. Um, but if it did provide this information, then there is obviously a moral question that arises from that. Um, I just wanted to, to address the following. Yasmin says about, the, the, you know, we must show, as it were, our, our principles. We must show that we're better yeah. than them. We are better than Al-Qaeda. We don't have to show that, Yasmin. No, you uh, on, uh, in, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yasmin, Yasmin, just wait a second. But the point is this, what Yasmin is doing, and what many people are doing at the moment, is holding America and our, and our allies to a, such a uniquely high standard that no society could ever live up to it. That even, that even the worst enemy of a society has to be buried according to the customs that they would want. You know, I can't raise it in me, uh, Yasmin, to think that whether or not the customs around his burial were perfect in your eyes is the most important thing in the Bin Laden story. And you are as no, barbaric on, as on. them. Well, we're not just barbaric no, you are as them. Oh, of course then. we're not. What, of because, because we don't yes. do the exact Islamic burial, we're you're as better, barbaric no better. Uh, it's as if we'd flown planes you're into no buildings. Better. This is you moral no relativism better. gone mad. It's worse than moral relativism. It's an inversion of morality. You can't choose your morality. Bits. You can't choose bits of it. Yeah. Well, you do. I don't. You do, and you, decide, and you decide to apply moral norms to societies that you dislike, which you wouldn't apply to no, others. I have, I'm critical of all people who behave barbarically. Yeah, and some worse, some more better. than others, yes. No, yeah. it's some not worse true. Than others. Douglas Murray emphasizes the ethical dimension of granting bin Laden a trial. The essence of his argument is a call to recognize the gravity of bin Laden's crimes against humanity and the importance of swift justice. He posits that the rights of a mass murderer cannot be equated with those of his victims or their families who were denied any form of justice or mercy. This stance resonates with the sentiments of many terrorism experts and victims advocates who argue that the nature of terrorism targeting civilians to instill fear and advance political goals places it beyond the pale of conventional warfare and criminality, thereby necessitating a different response. Historically, the response to acts of terrorism has sparked debate among legal scholars, policymakers, and the public. The targeted killing of terrorists, especially those like bin Laden, who are considered combatants in an ongoing conflict, is supported by international law under the right of self-defense. This perspective is bolstered by the UN Security Council's resolutions in the wake of 9-11, which recognized the global threat posed by al-Qaeda and the necessity of a coordinated international response. 
Critics of Murray's view argue for the importance of upholding the rule of law and the principles of justice, even in cases involving terrorists. They contend that trials serve not only to punish the guilty, but also to document their crimes for history, providing a sense of closure for victims' families. However, Murray counters this by highlighting the unique threat posed by terrorism and the need for decisive action to protect civilian lives and national security. In essence, Douglas Murray's arguments in the debate underscore a broader conversation about how democratic societies should respond to terrorism. This discussion involves balancing the principles of justice and the rule of law with the imperative to protect citizens from those who operate outside the bounds of conventional morality and legality.